at the world come table one of these days. Come, grab a feast of milk and honey, listen to me now. Grab a feast of milk and honey, one of these days, hallelujah. Grab a feast of milk and honey, I'm gonna feast of milk and honey, one of these days. Good morning, children. You are welcome to our Sunday school this morning. Hope you are all fine and happy to be in Sunday school. Before we start our lesson, let us pray. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sunday. Thank you for being with us throughout the week. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for our teachers. Thank you for our friends. Jesus, come and teach us your word. Come and write these words on our, in our hearts and help us to be good and obedient children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson today is Lesson 9b and the title, Goodbye, My Son. The memory verse is, His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. John chapter 2, verse 5. Our text is taken from the book of Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 51. But we are going to read some selected verses. 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. 43. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. 46. And it came to pass, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? 51. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Children, we are going to see different stages of a child's growth. From baby to boyhood. When a child is a baby, the mother makes sure they bath them, brush their hair, feed them. And when the child starts to grow teeth and their gum is itching, the mother makes sure they give them a rattle to rub on their itching gum. Before you know it, the child is not my baby. They've started school. The mommy will take them to school and bring them back home. And very soon, this child gets to primary six. And some of them will say, Mommy, what can, can't I go to school by myself? But the mother knows that there are danger out there. And then that is why they take them to school and then go back to bring them home. But when the child is in year seven, they start to go to school by themselves. And then they come back home. But their mother's heart will still be after them until when they come home, that's when the mommy's heart will be at peace. These are not the only things mothers do. Sometimes children come home discouraged. Maybe some boys at school had upset them. And then the mother will read the word of God with them, pray with them, and encourage them. And this makes the child 
to grow strong and then the mother feed them with good food and also spiritual food this makes children to grow very strong some of the parents even take their children to music school so that they can grow and be useful for God these are all the things our mother does for us this takes us to a lesson of today goodbye my son who is this son Jesus and who was the mother Mary Mary remembered how the angel of the Lord appeared to her that she was going to bear the Son of God. The angel told her that she was highly favored and the Lord was with her. Very soon, Jesus was born. And when he was a baby, King Herod wanted to harm the child and they have to fly to Egypt to be able to protect Jesus. Very soon, when it was safe, they came back to their house in Nazareth. And G Mary was teaching Jesus how to grow, how to be obedient, how to be helpful at home. He was helping Mary in the kitchen and around the house. And he was also helping his father Joseph in the carpentry shop. Jesus was a very obedient child and it was very good that the mother was very happy to have him in the house children all that i told you that our parents were doing for us in order to make us grow physically and spiritually all this mary did in order for jesus to be able to carry out the plan of god in his life when jesus was 12 years old they went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. Just like our own camp meeting where we go to the camp for once in a year. And at the end of the feast, on their return home, they found out that Jesus was not with them. They thought he was with other children in the front. But when they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem three days. And then they found him in the temple among the teachers of law and some elders teaching them and asking them questions. Then they called him apart and told him, Jesus, we've been looking for you. And Jesus humbly told them that, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? But he followed them back home and he was obedient unto them. Another time, Jesus was invited to a marriage in Cana of Galilee and he went there with his mother and his disciples. At a point, Mary heard the servant saying that there was no more wine. Mary knew that Jesus was the son of God and that he had a special calling on his life and that Jesus can do anything. So Mary went to him and told him that they had no more wine. And Jesus provided more wine for the ceremony. Everywhere Jesus went, he was always doing good. Mary was chosen by God to be the mother of his only begotten son because Mary was good. God can also make use of us because we are all special children for our parents and also for God. And he can make use of us just as he made use of Mary. He can make us to be Sunday school teachers. He can make us to be pastors. He can also make us to be musicians and be useful in his, in his house. But we must ask him to come into our heart to save our souls, to forgive us all the bad things we have done, then Jesus will come into our heart, save our souls, and make us to be what he wants us to be, to be good and obedient children for him. That is the end of our lesson. God bless you. The statement for this lesson is Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the activity for ages 2 to 5 is Jesus' mother.
do the finger play to the poem with your parents. And for ages 6 to 8, which words do not belong? Each set of words below has three words that go together and a fourth word that does not belong. Draw a line through the word that does not belong. Our lesson for next week is Lesson 9C, Anna's Prayer. And the memory verse is, For this child I pray, and the Lord has given me my petition. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. Bye, God bless you. See you next week. Good morning, boys and girls. You are all welcome to Answer Class. We are studying lesson 80. Our memory verse is, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Before we go into our lesson, I want you to look up and see what I want to show you. Here is a, a toothpaste, new, sealed, and here is a container. I want to open this uh, toothpaste and empty it into this container and see if I'll be able to return it back into its place. There you go. Yeah. Now, I want to return it back. Try to return it back now. Oh, it's not going. Let me try. Let me try more. Ah, it's not going. Wow. Yes. It's not, it's not possible. That is to tell us that if any words come out of our mouth, we cannot put it back. And that will now lead us into our lesson of today, titled The Troublemaker. Are you a troublemaker? Am I a troublemaker? No. That is why we want to study this lesson this morning. Our text is taken from St. James Chapter 3, verses 1 to 18, but we are just going to read some selected verses. I want you to open your Bible wherever you are and read along with me. James, chapter 3, 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation too. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in weight, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body three. Behold, we put bites in the horse's mouth, that, may, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fairy winds, yet are they turned about with a very small head, whithersoever the governor listed. Five, even so the tongue is a little member, and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire king let. Six, and the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the curse of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Eight, but the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Let's close our Bible and put it aside and listen to the lesson. The main focus of our lesson this morning is on tongue. Tongue is a very small part of our body. Tongue, as small as it is, it is very important. Without it, we cannot speak very well. We might not even be able to talk. Tongue, as small as it is, it 
control the whole of our body. The Bible says that tongue it is full of deadly poison. In our text, the Bible tells us that our tongue is like fire. That is, our tongue, if it is not properly tamed, we can use it to destroy another people's life. We can use it to damage other people's uh, life. Our tongue, we, we normally use it for swearing, cursing other people. Whereas God doesn't want us to use our, our tongue to curse any other people. The lesson of today mentioned about a big ship. As big as ship is, it's being controlled by those small head. Even big aircraft, as big as you can see it, it is only small thing that controls it. The same thing happens to our tongue as it controls the whole of our body. In our lesson story today, Matteo went to Paul Williams a workshop to go and collect his bike that he wanted to repair for the coming Saturday race. But when he got there, he was disappointed. Uh, Williams had not repaired the bike. Instead of Matthew to be calm and listen to what Williams will explain to him, he was furious. He was raising abusive words on Williams. He was abusing him. He collected his bike forcefully. He went out and slammed the door and promised uh, William that I will never come to your shop anymore. He just went away. But as for Williams, he was a Christian. He could not bear those uh, uh, rubbish from uh, Matthew. And he wanted to make peace with him. He went all about to look for him, he saw Matteo at the park. He was trying to explain to him that, oh, I'm very sorry, I will help you to do it. Don't worry, I will help you to do it. Matteo now said, oh, don't, don't worry, sorry for what I said the other time. William was now telling him that, no, I know, it's not you. It's because your heart needed Christ. You need to remove all the dirties in your heart. You need to cleanse your heart and you cannot do it alone. You needed God. That Matthew realized that, oh, I need to pray. So Matthew now prayed and he later got saved. He had a change of heart. Boys and girls, we must avoid evil speech. We must beware of unnecessary or foolish talking. Just like uh, our memory verse that says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we need to caution our mouth. We need to, we need to tame our, our, our tongue and put it under control so that we'll be able to say the good thing at all times. If our heart is not right with God, our thinking too will not be right. What will be coming out to be lying, swearing, hatred, all sorts of things will be coming out of our tongue. But if our heart is right with God, things like love, kindness, thankfulness, clean, cleanliness, good things, will be kindness will be coming out of our, our tongue. We should use our tongue to sing praises unto God, praying unto Him, reading our Bible, uh, saying Amen when the preacher is preaching. And for, for us to do that, we need to do something today after the end of this lesson. Let us go down on our knees and pray to Jesus, invite Jesus to our hearts to, to cleanse us, to wash away our sins. And when that is done, Jesus will be able to plant the seed of peace and love into our hearts we will be able to love others and use our mouth, our tongue, in praising God. The key statement of our lesson this morning is, Jesus, help me to control my tongue. 
our class activities will be shown on the screen. What did he say? It is impossible to speak English without vowels. Add the missing vowels to the words in this verse and read what Solomon, the author of Proverbs, had to say about good words. Our lesson for next Sunday is Lesson 81, titled Hometown Missionaries. The memory verse is, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7. That is the end of our lesson. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's lesson. We thank you for the primary part lesson. We thank you for the answer lesson. Father Almighty, we don't, we don't want to be a troublemaker. Everlasting Father, come and help us to breathe through our tongue. Come and help write your words in the flesh table of our hearts. Make all good boys and girls so that at the end we'll be able to run between heaven. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.